If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. The key to solving part A, which asks us to determine the speed of each object when the two pass each other, is to understand that when the two objects pass each other, they're going to be located at this level right about here. And we'll notice that mass 2 has to travel upward of a distance that is equal to half of this height, and mass 1 has to travel downward also by a distance that's equal to half of that height. In other words, when the two objects pass each other, their final height is going to be half of the value of the original height. And we might draw that situation as follows. So mass 2 is moving upward and mass 1 is moving downward. And again, their final height would be equal to h divided by 2. Now during this falling and rising of the two masses, we're going to be able to conserve energy. So let's look at that equation. And so on the left hand side, we have a little subscript of f to indicate the final energies. And we've placed the kinetic energy, the gravitational potential energy, and the spring potential energy on that side of the equation. And then on the right hand side, we have the corresponding values for the initial state. Now there is not a spring present in this question, so we can eliminate the potential energy of the spring. Also, initially the blocks are at rest, and so the kinetic energy initially will be zero, so we can eliminate that term as well. And if we go back to the initial picture, the one that we had before we modified it, we can see that in terms of gravitational potential energy, we will have some of that present because mass one is located at a certain height off of this table surface. So on the right hand side of this equation where it says potential energy G initial, we're going to fill in the gravitational potential energy of mass one. Mass two is on the surface and so it does not have any gravitational potential energy. So for mass one, we would have its mass multiplied by G multiplied by its initial height, which we can see is actually H. And then over to the final picture, the two blocks are both moving and they're both moving with the same speed. So we're going to have a certain amount of kinetic energy and we can write that as one half multiplied by the combined mass. Now essentially we're treating the two blocks as a single system so we can combine their masses and they're going to have the same speed squared. And so this is the expression for the final kinetic energy. And then also, since both blocks are located at a height off the surface of the table, we're going to have some gravitational potential energy as well. And that can be represented by combining them into a single system, just like we did for the kinetic energy. So we're going to have the combined mass of m1 plus m2 multiplied by g, and then multiplied by their final height, which we noted earlier was h divided by 2. Now our goal in part A is to determine the speed, so we're trying to solve for V, and there are a number of ways of doing that, but one way would be to multiply each term of this equation by 2, including the right hand side, and if we do that, the 2 and this 1 half will cancel out, and the 2 here and the 2 in the denominator here will also cancel out. Next, we can divide each term of the equation by m1 plus m2 including the term on the right hand side. And if we do that, though, the m1 plus m2 will cancel on the left in that term and also in that term. And then we can subtract this gh over to the right hand side. And then finally we can take the square root of both hand sides. Make sure the square root on the right goes all the way across the entire side. And then the left will become just v. And then at this point we can plug in the known values. m1 and m2 were stated in the question. g is 9.8 and then h has a value of 4. And when you plug in those known values on your calculator you should get about 3.13 and then the standard unit of speed will be meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part a. Now on to part B, which asks us for the speed when the 5 kilogram object, which is mass 1, hits the table. So let's adjust the picture so that M1 is located all the way down at the surface, and then M2 is going to be pulled all the way up to the height that was marked H. And there we have it. Now this will be a very similar approach. We're going to conserve energy. 
and once again there's no spring so we can cross those terms out. The initial energy is going to be the same. The objects were released from rest so the kinetic energy was zero and then the only gravitational potential energy that was initially present was m times g. Indeed we should say m1 because it was m1 that was initially suspended in the air times g times its initial height which was h. And then over here we're going to have both objects moving and we can once again combine them into a single system so one half times the combined mass times their speed squared and then if we look at this diagram the only gravitational potential energy present is that of m2 so we would have m2 multiplied by g multiplied by its height which we can see from the picture is that height that's marked h we're solving for v again we can multiply every term by 2 we can subtract the 2m2gh, this term right here, over to the right. If we want to get fancy on the right side, we can actually factor out a 2gh so that we're left with just m1 minus m2. And then we would divide both sides by m1 plus m2. So that on the left hand side, we just have v squared. But to get rid of the v squared, we would take the square root. And we would do that on the right hand side as well. So this would be the final expression. We could then go ahead and plug in the known values. And when we compute that, we should get about 4.43 meters per second. So this is the correct answer to part B. Now on to part C, where M1 has hit the table and has come to rest. M2 is being propelled upward because it's still moving. Now notice in part B, we determined its speed at this point to be the 4.43 meters per second. So that means that its initial velocity, which we can call VI, is equal to positive 4.43. We'll call it positive since it's being propelled upward in the positive y direction. And then it's going to, through its momentum, continue to move upward until it reaches a certain height. So starting from here, it's going to go upward until it reaches a certain height up here. And at that moment, its final velocity will be 0 meters per second. Now we can once again conserve energy. The energy that's initially present is the kinetic energy of mass 2, but it also has some gravitational potential energy because it's located a certain height off the table. So we would have m2 times g times that height. But then when it reaches this height up here, because it stops, there's no longer any kinetic energy. The only energy present is the gravitational potential energy. Now, we got to be careful how we represent the height. We can call this height right here perhaps just y. And then this height here is marked as h. So the total height of m2 at this point would be the combined height. It would be y plus h. So we would have the gravitational potential energy of m2 times g times y plus h. And our goal is to find the value of, of what we called y. So to do that, why don't we, again, multiply everything by 2. And then we could divide both sides by this term 2m2g. And then finally, to solve for y, we can subtract h from both sides of the equation. We can then go ahead and plug in all the known values. Remember, the initial speed was what we found in part b, the 4.43 meters per second. And when we crunch that down, we get exactly 1 meter. So this would be the correct answer to part c of the question. Notice, by the way, that part c could have also been solved using kinematics, where we have the initial velocity, the final velocity is 0, and since it's essentially in free fall, because there are no forces acting on it, the acceleration would have been negative 9.8. And so you could have used that acceleration, that final velocity, and this initial velocity, and you could have solved for the uh, displacement, which we could call delta y. And as an exercise, you might want to pick a kinematics formula and try that, and when you do it, you should get one meter.